forget that ring. Well, if I do something, get my mind off it. I can always sew something. It was horrible. That knock on the door. Jeff Clark, Vicky's friend. You're Jeff Clark? Yes, I was supposed to be here last night. I just called Vicky. Something happened. She's on her way over right now. Oh. Something wrong? No. Come in. Look, if you've changed your mind about no. my staying here. I... My father agreed it would be a good idea. It's just that. Well, come in. I had a nightmare, and I, last night, it started with a knock on the door, and when I opened it, it was you. I mean, you were in my dream. Me? Oh, come on. You've never met me before. I guess I just imagined it was you, but... Uh, was Vicky asleep? Yes, uh, she's on her way over now. Oh, then she'll be here shortly. Would you like some coffee? I can make some fresh. No, thank you. I just had breakfast at the diner. Well, I'll, I'll show you your room. Miss Evans, I can stay someplace else. It's all right. No, no. look, I, I'm not usually like this. It's, it's just that I can't get that dream off my mind. Would you like to tell me about it? I don't mean to be personal. No, it isn't that. Well, I like to know what I do in other people's dreams, <laughs> especially when they don't know me. I, I think I'd just like to forget it. Well, maybe you will if you talk about it. Look, I'm the perfect person. Now, I don't know you, so I won't have any psychological theories about what it meant. You want to tell me? Well, it started just as I told you. It, it was a knock on the door, and I, and I opened it. It was you! I mean, your clothes, just the way you are now. You, you just stood there and you were, you were looking at me. You didn't say anything. Well, that's because I'm a gentleman. See, I you didn't want to say me. anything. And you motioned for me to follow you. And I didn't want to, but I had to, and I had no choice. That was one of the things that made the dream so frightening. Well, look, it's all over now, so you... You led me to a door. You opened it. I knew I was to go in. Well, didn't I say anything? Not a word. I walked into this room. It was dark. You slammed the door. You left me alone. I heard the door lock, and, and I screamed. And then the lights came on. And I was in a room with nothing in it. The walls were all doors, nothing else. And I heard a voice. My voice. I don't know. I didn't understand what it meant. Through sight and sound and faceless terror, through endless corridors of trial and error, a blazing head of light shall burn, and one door leads to the point of return. Makes no sense. But behind one door, the, I heard the sound of a, of a tinkling music. And I ran to it, and I opened it. Miss Evans. It was a skull. It was a skull staring at me and moving toward me. I knew I couldn't get past it. Miss Evans, take it. I didn't know what to do. For one moment, I thought that I, that I could get past it. But I couldn't. And then I tried to close the door, and Easy, I couldn't do Maggie. that. I didn't know what to do. The door wouldn't close. It just wouldn't. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't run past it. I couldn't close the door. It was nothing. Maggie. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't need any of this. 
Wow. Come to Maggie Evans' house and hear her latest nightmare. Are you kidding? I can't wait for the next installment. <laughs> if I didn't, if I hadn't told someone, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> I just couldn't stop thinking about it. You must think I'm really neurotic. Look, Maggie, we all have our dreams. Well, you'll find that I'm really quite level-headed. I feel so much better. Dr. Lang. All right, what do you want? What is it? What's happened? Look, I'm not going anywhere with you. Where do you want me to go? you answer me? What's in there? Lang! Lang, let me out of here! Let me out! Through night and sound, and faceless terror through endless corridors by trial and error a head of blazing light does burn and one door leads to the point of return <laughs> <laughs> 